अच्छा आपके ख्याल से वट इज फोक्स what do you think what is stokes what what are the things which may be asked in oski exam or uh, tokes exam whatever you name it uh, stations honge stations honge the counseling ke ecg ke space ke basically wo clinical point of view se aapko karenge okay okay so i will rephrase what you said that actually tokes task oriented assessment of clinical skills or uh, some people uh, in some exams they say it as objective structured clinical examination so actually oski or tokes if someone just want to or if you want to prepare it just imagine yourself in perioperative period that it starting from pre operative intraoperative post operative period what are the things which you face as an anesthetist maybe it is some evaluation which is being done in the pre operative period some counseling some uh, optimization or intraoperatively when you talk about uh, anesthesia conduct starting from monitoring to anesthesia equipment to any troubleshooting any uh, interpretation from the data which you are being uh, you are monitoring or in any case or according to any case any complication anticipated or unanticipated which you may face uh, during the conduct of anesthesia this all uh, includes what we called as uh, um, like oski or tokes okay so just if you open your vision then you will come to know that anything whatever uh, you have heard up till now or whatever you have repaired up till now this is all oski okay so that's what you were saying that it may be ecg ecg may be the rhythm strip which you are rhythm rhythm which you are seeing uh, in the intraoperative period or the preoperative 12 lead ecg okay similarly uh, abg's interpretation as a point of care testing or in in preoperative status or while working in icu okay so i'm just giving you an example then uh, there will be some stations related to uh, anesthesia equipment mainly airway equipment or um, any other equipment related to uh, anesthesia workstation safety and some other equipment which are actually um, lock not clearly um, related to you but and you are not using it but you have to know about it like mri like uh this one pacemaker like uh, this one a country okay so uh, this is uh, what you should be knowing uh, related to equipment uh, if you just uh, whatever questions they will be asking you will be the first question will be so if you if you know that what are the things which they will be asking you it will be easier for you to prepare so first question which uh, they may ask you about any equipment uh, or any any monitoring uh, they will that will be the working principle that how that equipment work okay so that will be the first question then what is the uh, like uh, principle or theory behind that the working of that 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 for example if you take example of pulse oximetry everyone knows uh, what will be the working principle of pulse oximeter that is combination of oximetry and plethysmography and uh, oximetry is that oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin will be absorbing different uh, light as well as uh, the the absorption of the light will be according to beer and lambert law according to the lent and according to the concentration of the hemoglobin so that is the working principle so you you should be knowing about each equipment or monitoring uh, because uh, it's not possible for me to teach each and every equipment but i'm just giving you an insight that this should be the first question you should be preparing similarly if you are talking about antidel you will be saying that antidel the working principle is infrared gas a gas analyzer okay and then the next question will be related to how that equipment is working so that that for example for pulse oximeter there is a probe there is a system which is uh, take, taking the signals and plethysmography which is taking the 
uh, pulsatile component of uh, that thing and then converting it into according to the the graph it is uh, taking the the, the 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 graph which you are actually looking at similarly and tidal there there may be the 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 performance of equipment this point will be in the form of side stream or mainstream and how the graph you are interpreting okay and what are the troubleshooting so similarly for and tidal they, they they you may face the graphs related to the, the rebreathing or bronchospasm or expiratory valve problem or inspiratory valve problem similarly you they, they may ask you what are the limitations or what is the the practical exhibition of pulse oximeter what are their limitations okay so uh, the third question may be related to uh, the information how will you be interpreting it so th these are the questions they will be asking you and now you can fit this heading this concept uh, in or any other equipment like for example vaporizer for example humidifier for example scavenging for, uh, if you if you just try to cram uh, from one side to other side that maybe it will be difficult but if you just divide it in in few parts that were what are the, the like I, I ask you one question if anyone can uh, is, is in the position to answer because this may be uh, the the task which they can ask you in in a, a station what are the safety system in uh, oxygen safety system in an anesthesia machine who can answer this question what are the safety system in anesthesia machine for related to oxygen supply just try to answer anyone fatima would you like to say something anyone please no one just try. Sir, what do you want to ask? My uh, my question is: What are the safety system in our anesthesia conduct or anesthesia machine or whatever by which we can ensure that oxygen is supplied to the patient safely? So, fail safe system and uh, oxygen analyzer. I'm sorry. Again, please. Fail fail safe system and oxygen analyzer. Okay, is it is it the story finished? No. Just try to try to uh, streamline this question a little bit more. One thing will be the the supply, and one thing will be the actual uh, delivery. Am I right? So, what about um, central supply uh, cylinders? Then the regulators, then Ritchie whistle, then the the pressure reducing valves or pressure sensors. Then what about the safety in rotameter related to the knobology, related to the downstream entrance of oxygen, related to fail safe valve or whatever you can say that uh, uh, if our oxygen supply is shut off, the other gases supply will also be shut off downstream means that oxygen would be the last gas to entering to to enter the supply okay mm -hmm. uh, then there is the locking system interlocking system in which that minimum uh, like you are not able to change the ratio more than 25 percent for example or or there is a whenever oxygen is uh, a machine is switched or even switched off to a minimum flow is still going and the Ritchie whistle is that it, this has uh, a pneumatic control rather than uh, electrical control. Okay. So what else? Then one part will be oxygen analyzer. It will be telling you the inspire, inspired oxygen and then expired oxygen. Uh, do you know how much percentage of oxygen is there in the expired gas? Which we expire out usually. Anyone knows? Yes, Fatima or Amina or Hassam. Anyone, how much is uh, in, uh, concentration of oxygen in expired 
and what is its significance it's, it this question has just come by the way so i want to clarify how would it be 60 to 70 percent has some and we are talking about air am i right so if you are expired in in our expired uh, gas which we expire is it, it's around 16 percent Okay. Uh, sir, basically, its significance is that whenever we are pre-oxygenating a patient, so we actually know that how much well pre-oxygenated we have done it. No, no, no. That is something else. That is something else. You are right. You are answering right, but uh, this is answer to some other question. The, uh, I'm asking that what is the, the, the concentration? Because, for example, if it is 5% or 10%, what is the significance of mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing? You understand that even if we yes. are giving mouth, mouth to mouth breathing, even then we are giving around 16% of oxygen. Okay. So, sir, you are basically asking in a normal patient who is not. Yes, yes, yes. Nor in a normal patient. Focus. Of course, you see the sir. other in the other patient, in the other sir. patient, it will be depending. The answer should be that it will be depending on the FIU2 you are giving. Okay. Sir. If you are giving 100% oxygen, then the expired gas will also be uh, similarly in, uh, more. If you are giving 30%, then this will be according to, but I'm talking about air. If you are giving only air, even in the expired gas, it should be around 16%. Okay. Okay. Coming back to what uh, I just asked you that the, uh, because why are you are unable to answer this question? Uh, like uh, uh, Mariam or whatever, whosoever just answered this question, the, she on, only mentioned about, what did you mention? Fail safe and oxygen analyzer. Am I right? Yes. yes. So now you can you can now you can realize if you start from one side and go to the patient side, you will find a number of things which you missed. Okay. So that will be related to pressures. That will be related to the uh, the quality of the mixture which uh, which which is going on. So this is one of the question which they can ask you, and uh, uh, like uh, uh, in addition to the questions which you have seen in the book, and you are not able to answer because this is not written in the in the holy book which you worship, the the, the holy Morgan Sharif. You will not find the answer to this question which I have told you in a, in the way which I have told you, because this is uh, beyond the limit of one book. So uh, okay. So this is one uh, part of it, okay? So we, I will be trying to give you an overview and then uh, we can jump into, uh, into it separately. So one portion which I have just told you is about the equipment. The equipment, I'm just naming the equipment, you, you, can, you can do it. If you are only talking about this oxygen supply, you will be looking at what is a pin index safety system, diameter index safety system, how to do like what is the tug test okay how to check the leak in the in the uh, anesthesia circuit then uh, like uh, what about the rotameter what are the principles and the other thing which i have just told you about the pressure reducer how much is the what is the concept of low uh, pressure system and high pressure system and in some machines, it's there is intermediate uh, pressure system as well. And then uh, after that, the the pressures, the Ritchie whistle, and what I have told you. And uh, in uh, after that, the other equipment which they can ask you is humidifier, humidifier scavenging. Alt, uh, they can ask you about uh, suctioning. Okay, they can ask you about diathermy. They can ask you about MRI. They can ask you about ultrasound. They can ask you about uh, we will go into uh, a little bit of details later on. And what else? Uh, some of the devices which you are, they are, they can ask you what is level one infuser. Okay. What is uh, this one? Uh, uh, this uh, syringe pump. They can ask you, even they can place syringe, uh, they can show you a syringe pump. They can ask you how to use it. What are the advantages? What are the uh, trouble shooting how to what are the things which you should be taking care of okay these are practical questions uh, then then the uh, 
uh, do you know what is the standard word and standard two monitoring? What is, if someone asks you, what is standard one monitoring and what is standard two monitoring? You know, you have to speak out if you are reluctant, if you will be mute, other than if you, for example, you are on duty and you cannot speak out, that is something else. But if you don't speak out here, uh, it will, it's, it, it's, it's useless if I speak out and finish the session. You have to answer. Uh, so standard, standard one, one you one require one. the presence of some special specialist anesthetist, senior anesthetist, okay. and uh, standard to involve uh, oxygenation, ventilation. Basically, the monitoring standard involves the monitoring all the while. Just please, is one by one, one by one, okay? Uh, Mariam, just continue the answer. You started it, so continue it, please. Standard one, you say the presence of a trained anesthetist all the time. Uh, okay, this is one uh, thing. And standard uh, two, include what monitoring is included? Oxygenation, okay. oxygenation ventilation. Uh, sir, okay, so just think about it. Oxygenation by pulse oximeter, ventilation by end tidal. And this, what is the C? C is for circulation. So what we do for circulation, blood pressure, blood pressure monitoring, temperature, ECG and ECG and NIV, uh, non-invasive, non-invasive. Be in order. Pulse oximeter for oxygenation, ECG, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, breathe uh, for ventilation and tidal, and wow. for circulation ECG and uh, non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. Okay. And the other, the, the next thing is temperature. The other, all other monitorings which you are doing it is additional monitoring, okay? Which will be according to the case you are doing. For example, if you want to monitor heart in detail, the next step other than uh, the things which I have, we have told in the standard two monitoring, other than that can be cardiac output monitor. Other than that will be, that will be intraarterial blood pressure monitoring. CVP, pulmonary artery catheter, or anything like that. And if you talk about neuromonitoring, the additional monitoring can be, just give example of neuromonitoring. Anyone please? Yes, Hassam. Uh, sir, base monitoring, so matter evoke okay, potentials. Good. Evoke potentials. What else? What are work potentials? Sensory work potentials. So work potentials. Or... Okay. What else? Uh, sir, EEG, processed EEG, e, that is Very good monitoring. There was, what else? Uh, sir, any cranial nerve uh, monitoring. Very good. Individual nerve monitoring. In Examples are facial nerve monitoring, monitoring of sir, recurrent yes, laryngeal yes, nerve sir, by yes. placing electrodes electrodes in endotracheal there is a specialized endotracheal tube having uh, electrodes uh, 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 implanted in that endotracheal tube and it is it placed in a way that it is touching the it is touching the vocal cords okay and uh, the surgeon is monitoring it so this is one of them facial nerve monitoring is one of them and uh, there are there are some other uh, neuromonitoring like intracranial pressure monitoring, okay? And some of the monitorings which you do in things, uh, think a little bit. Sir, nurse monitoring. I'm sorry? Nurse, sir, near infrared spectrometry. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, what about transcranial Doppler? Okay, the, the neuromonitoring, which we, 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 they are doing in the neurosurgical procedures. Okay. So these are the things which there are a specialized monitoring. Urine output is a specialized monitoring. Uh, intraabdominal pressure monitoring is a specialized monitoring. Okay. Any compartment, my, my, my of any compartment pressure is a specialized monitoring. Okay. In respiratory system, for example, if you are having a, a premature baby, 
for congenital diaphragmatic hernia or any, any baby, for example, with the, or any patient with the low lung compliance, you will be monitoring the airway pressures. Okay. Then uh, similarly, you are monitoring the uh, agent concentration that you are, that is telling you the inspired uh, uh, sevoflurane or isoflurane or whatever expired. Then there, there is a provision in modern anesthesia workstation. They put the data for the age and it, it is just giving you a rough idea about uh, MAC. So for example, according to the flow, according to the concent dial concentration and according to the ventilation and according to the age requirement, roughly they will be uh, telling you the, uh, 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 there will be the, uh, they will calculate it and they will tell you one MAC or 0.8 MAC or 0.6 MAC or two MAC, whatever, okay? So there, it is not uh, one MAC mean, doesn't mean that dial is one. One MAC means, but like one MAC for desflurane is, what is one MAC for desflurane? You have to interact, please. Raise the hand and tell if you know. 6%, sir. Sixth. Okay. See, because I am just trying to tell you as many things. I, the, this it looks very simple thing, but they can ask you this question: different MAC, different uh, vapor pressures, and what are the factors which affect the induction? So, in this, uh, while telling you this agent analyzer, actually I have mentioned the factors which disturb the or change the. Uh, induction as well, like dial concentration, flow, uh, ventilation, and there will be some age-related factors and uh, cardiac output, okay, and any right to left shunt, okay. So these are the things which will be affecting the uh, induction as well. And you, you can monitor this by agent analyzer, some of them, okay. So uh, th this is... Uh, Related to the specialized monitoring, which uh, which may be asked. What else? Any other monitoring which we have not talked up till now? Okay, so this is one part of it. Uh, the 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 other part of it will be uh, uh, related to any critical incidents. So I will just tell you what can be the a generalized approach to handle any critical incident. Like, for example, you are uh, undergoing a case with the laparoscopic on laparoscopic surgery, and suddenly there is the heart rate goes down significantly. What will you do? Any man who volunteer, then I will ask that person. Please, don't hesitate. Don't be shy. Answer. I will repeat the question if who, who just volunteer and I will ask you, rephrase the question again. Yes, Fatima, you want to answer Kashif? Who wants to answer this question? No one wants to ask the answer the question. Uh, sir, yes, can you repeat the question? Okay, I will repeat. You are uh, managing a case uh, of laparoscopic cholestectomy in, in a 50-year-old female. When they were doing the gastric, uh, this one, pneumoperitoneum, suddenly patient went into bradycardia. Okay. What will you do? Stop the insufflation. Sir, stop the stimulus which is okay. mainly carbon dioxide insufflation. And if uh, after that patient is not managing, then we will give the atropine stat 1 mg. Okay. What else? Hello. Hello. What else, please? Anyone, any, anyone wants to improve the answer? Sir, first inform the notify the surgeon to start. Okay. Okay. And Immediately inflate, deflate the 
uh, abdominal distension. Okay. After that, if there are no any response, then give the atropine one, one milligram immediately. Okay. What else? And uh, what is the you, general approach for any managing any emergency? ABC start. ABC start. So have you said anything about A? Any of you? Have you said about call for help? No, sir. So the first answer is, this is an emergency. The, my approach will be airway breathing circulation. I will immediately make 100% oxygen. I will immediately call for help. I will, I will immediately inform the surgeon. Okay. The bradycardia, yes, bradycardia may be associated with cardiovascular collapse. Is it only mandatory that it is only uh, vagal stimulation? You are not ready to see any other cause? You are not interested in looking at any other cause than uh, uh, laparoscopic uh, this? Uh, yes, of course. What about uh, they have uh, ruptured the any visera? What about they have ruptured uh, uh, aorta? Is it the only reason? Vagal stimulation? Would you like to see any other symptomatology than heart rate? So that is the that is the key for any for any on, answering anything. Okay, your approach will be airway, breathing, circulation. Call for help immediately. Stop. Stop. Maybe anything. Stop the surgeon. Stop the infusion. Stop uh, the flow of gas. Like for example, if you if you the scenario is telling you uh, about malignant hyperthermia. Okay, or local anesthesia toxicity or anaphylaxis, you will maybe giving uh, you are like it will be different, but I'm telling you the general approach. You have to call someone, you have to stop something, you have to increase the FIO2, you have to see the circulation, you have to see the differential diagnosis. Okay, or you have to change the position or anything like that. Like maybe you are, for example, if aspiration occurs, you are moving head down. If you are, if you, it is uh, 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 like uh, anything like that, it may be head down or head up or uh, uh, like uh, stopping the, uh, the gases uh, and removing the circuit and attaching with the other in case of malignant hyperthermia. Okay. Uh, it may be stopping the surgeon and stopping the uh, stimulation as in uh, any, any bradycardia mediated thing. Okay. But in either of the case, you have to give answer your question in the form of airway breathing circulation okay and then you will be and then you will use another word which will be fitting in in any scenario that resuscitation resuscitation management and evaluation will go side by side mark this word resuscitation management and evaluation will go side by side you will be trying to rule out the causes so you will be seeing that whatever they have told are you in, uh, interested in uh, looking anything else? Would you like to say, I will be seeing the anti-idle CO2, whether the, the, there is loss of cardiac output, whether uh, you, you are interested in, in seeing the uh, uh, like blood pressure, whether you are seeing the airway pressures, like for example, if there is anaphylaxis, uh, there will be raised intra, uh, this this one uh, raised airway pressures. Okay, you would be in D. You will be saying any rash or anything like that in case of anaphylaxis. Okay, you will be uh, there. Will be there will be some patient factors, some anesthetic factors, and some surgical factors that will be changed. I am just giving you a general approach. Whenever they are giving you any scenario. Try to see some patient factors, some anesthetic factors, and some surgical factors. And in pregnant patient, you will be adding R and adding some obstetric or pregnancy related factors. Okay. So this should be your general approach. If you are uh, keeping this thing in your mind, you will not, I guarantee you, you will never fail in any critical incidence question or any emergency question. Am I clear? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So any, the, the list will be a big, big list. 
uh, it may be uh, like uh, bradycardia, tachycardia, uh, cardiac arrest, loss of cardiac output as occur in air embolism, uh, anaphylaxis, malignant hyperthermia, transfusion reaction, okay, uh, high spinal, total spinal, uh, like uh, local anesthesia toxicity. It may be anything, but usually you will see the general approach will be revolving around the same thing. And you will be correlating with the other clinical features, like if there is hypotension, it may be associated with tachycardia, it may be associated with bradycardia, it may be associated with high airway pressures. So you will be making the differential diagnosis and you will be using the word that my approach will be airway breathing circulation. I will make sure patient, patient's airway is patent, patient is breathing well, I will increase the FiO2. If the patient's airway is not secure, I will try to secure the airway. Patient is patient uh, does not like in any scenarios. Patient may be leading like any embolism. Uh, maybe air embolism, maybe uh, amniotic fluid embolism, uh, maybe uh, this uh, fat embolism. The general approach is the same. You will be starting on airway breathing circulation. You will be doing like in uh, in air embolism. You will be doing the head side down and try to just increase the, the pressure so that, uh, or if there is uh, like CVP or anything, you will try to aspirate the air. In other things, you are not doing anything. You are just uh, supporting the airway. If cardiac arrest has stuck, you will start the CPR. And otherwise, you're, you're, you will be giving the supportive treatment in the form of giving oxygen, giving maintaining the ventilation, giving fluids, giving vasopressors or inotropes as required according to the scenario. Or if there is some arrhythmia, you will be using some antiarrhythmics. Am I right? So this is the general approach and you should be keeping this thing in mind. So you will never ever miss any uh, scenario of emergency because you will, you, will, you will just keep the pulse. There will be, of course, there will be some, some difference in uh, a variety of clinical scenarios. Uh, air embolism, you will be aspirating the air, as I told you. In, in anaphylaxis, you will be giving uh, epinephrine, okay? You will be sending the samples uh, of tryptase, okay? You will be giving some vasopressors uh, infusion. You will be giving some fluid. You will be uh, uh, stopping the, the thing which, you, which, you, uh, which may be the cause. Similarly, anaphylaxis and similarly blood transfusion reaction, okay? The blood, the, the intraoperative, uh, uh, like uh, exhibition of anaphylaxis or blood transfusion reaction not necessarily be in the form of rash, okay? Because patient is sprained and raped, maybe you are not able to pick them. The, the, the sign which you will be getting may be the increased airway pressure, decreased saturation, or even frank pulmonary edema because of heart failure which occurs, which follow, okay? So you, you, will, be, you will be looking the pa the, the patient in a generalized way, okay? So if it is blood transfusion, you will immediately, the words which are the specific for this thing, that you will be stopping the blood and you will be sending, for example, if you are expecting that the, it was a wrong blood, okay? So uh, they may be uh, expecting to tell you, tell uh, by, to, uh, to tell that you will be sending the blood for cross match again. Or, and the other things, you will be giving some steroid, you will be giving some, uh, like uh, if, uh, if it is massive hemolysis, that maybe patient may, may be needing, uh, uh, like uh, need to pass the folies or um, like myoglobin urea, that like any, anything which can occur later on, okay? So am I clear up till now? Any, anything which you want to add or any question? Yes, my top most differential for this scenario is uh, just this is the message which is written here. Mm, actually, it depends because one of the scenario will be asked and you can divide it according to the things. Like, for example, one of the things which will be a little different will be failed intubation. Okay, so your answer will be revolving according to DAS algorithm. You will not be saying that I... You don't need to tell that I am telling you the DAS algorithm. They don't want to listen this. Maybe, maybe in some examiners they would be, but actually if you are telling the right thing, then you are okay. That, uh, that uh, like uh, my, uh, you will be trying to do, uh, use the different blades. You will be making the position different. You'll be you maybe needing the bougie 
or you may be needing the uh, this uh, glidoscope or video laryngoscope okay and then if it, even if it is failed you are passing the lma you are trying to ventilate then you will be your further uh, uh, decision will be according to the surgery what surgery the patient is undergoing if it is an elective procedure you would like to uh, you, you can try to intubate uh, with intubating LMA. If you fail, then you will uh, awaken the patient. Okay. If you had uh, given aspirin, rocuronium, you will be reversing it with Sugamedex to awaken the patient. Otherwise, you will be waiting, ventilating with the LMA and you will, be, you will not proceed if it is an elective procedure. Okay. It, this, the, the exception for this scenario is a pregnant patient because there are two lives and your decision will be according to the fetal distress versus no fetal distress. Uh, and uh, like the, you will be deciding according to the, to the discussion with the surgeon and uh, you, you will have some other concerns than uh, what we do in an, uh, any other patient, okay? But in either case, if it is an, uh, the general approach is that if it is an elective surgery, you will not proceed. If it is an emergency surgery, you will proceed. This is the basic difference, okay? So this is one of the scenario for failed intubation. And uh, they can ask you, for example, if there is a patient with difficult intubation, the, it will be an, and this is an unanticipated. So anticipated will be, they are expecting you to prepare even up to tracheostomy. The, ex, the, the, the preparation for anticipated difficult intubation as they can ask you in the form of, in the form of, they can ask you in the form of upper airway obstruction, okay? Like, for example, they can ask you a scenario of a baby having epiglottitis, okay? Or foreign body in which you, you can expect to have failed intubation, okay? You are expecting. Like, if you have a patient with epiglottitis, it's a, it's a difficult scenario. If you, uh, if you have an enlarged thyroid, you can fail to even ventilate, okay? So your safety will be revolving according to the scenario. And if you are, th there will be basic, two basic groups. One is anticipated and one is unanticipated. If you have a scenario of upper airway obstruction and large thyroid with suspect of tracheomalacia or in large thyroid, which may, may, which may block even f f uh, making uh, even ventilation difficult. So in that scenario, you, you have to tell that because, for example, in any other scenario, you can tell about uh, tracheostomy. But if you are dealing with a patient with big goiter, will you be able to do the tracheostomy? No. It will, even the tracheostomy will be difficult. So in that scenario, you have to say that you should be keeping the ENT surgeon with a rigid bronchoscope if you are even not able to ventilate of because you, you had a bad approach, you uh, did not go with spontaneous ventilation or you did not try for awake fiber optic, you try to sedate the patient and now the thyroid has stopped uh, the like, obstruct and now you are not able to even ventilate. So the, in that scenario, if you did not tell the examiner that, uh, that the, the option which I will have and in that scenario will be presence of rigid bronchoscope or, or if the obstruction is physical and you can you are seeing that this obstruction is because of the mass in the front of the neck, you may the, make the patient lateral. You will tilt the patient lateral so that the obstruction may be relieved or, or there is another last thing which they, they, you can uh, enlist in this list is reverse salic maneuver. Reverse salic maneuver. Anyone knows about it? What is reverse salic maneuver? Sir. Yes, anyone? Hello? Yes. Uh, it, uh, yeah, the instead is called to assist and to get it, uh, grip the any mass of the external side of neck up. Yes, like uh, you are just lifting the, the swelling, just like in salic manure, you are uh, pressing the cricoid cartilage. You are lifting the, the, the swelling in front of the neck by asking the assistant to lift that swelling to relieve the obstruction, okay? 
so these are the things which are related to upper airway obstruction in case of any impending edema for example the example is one of the example is epiglottitis one of the example is burn if you have a patient with burn and you are anticipating that uh, this patient might develop edema and obstruction you will be intubating it uh, in uh, early intubation uh, you will be secure the airway okay so these are the things which they can ask you about uh, emergency related to airway. The other may be differential diagnosis. It's a, it's a very simple question, uh, but you have to answer it e even uh, in a, a systematic way that you are undergoing a sur the surgery and there is a, a increased airway pressure. So what is the differential diagnosis? You have read it uh, and you know it, but you have to tell in an, in an organized way that again, your approach will be airway breathing circulation. You will just try to see whether the patient uh, anesthesia level is decreased, uh, like depth of anesthesia is not maintained or patient uh, need muscle relaxant or patient need analgesia or tube is kinked or there is some secretion. And at the same time, you as, as, uh, as to start with, I told that for any scenario, you have to approach, your approach should be airway breathing circulation. You will be seeing because bronchospasm may be bronchospasm, but bron or bronchospasm may be pulmonary embolism. The, the initial sign, even for pulmonary embolism, may be only raised airway pressures. So you have to say that you will be correlating it with the other clinical features like tachycardia or hypotension or even bradycardia can occur or even any arrhythmias can occur in addition to the airway pressures. So you, whenever they are asking you this question, then you will you can tell the same drill that you will be in, in, in giving some muscle relaxant, you will be giving an, uh, increasing the depth of anesthesia, you will be using some suction, you will be using, just try to see whether the tube is kinked, you will be seeing any stuck airway uh, uh, breathing circuit valves okay and then uh, you you can you will be using the approach of any bronchodilator or thing like that okay so this is a question which they ask frequently similarly an uh, airway another an airway complication which they ask is about laryngospasm okay so this is also a very common scenario which they ask and usually their approach is that they will be telling you that uh, uh, you are uh, 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 undergoing a young man, young muscular man, and that, that it was an appendicectomy, you extubate the patient, and then the patient suddenly uh, started having uh, paradoxical breathing, uh, and your uh, patient is not breathing, the bag is not moving. So what will you do? What should be the answer? Because it's a very common scenario, so if you can answer it, Fatima, you did not say speak out. Okay. Uh, there is some problem. I think we cannot hear you. Anyone else wants to speak? Yes. Be a little loud, please. Uh, first of all, do I have given the um a, a b c okay or a b c or first after that is all secure and uh continuous palliative airway pressure and mm -hmm. if not then give the saksa no you see you are again jumping did you use the call for help uh, call for it did you did you tell about uh, giving uh, this uh, larson's uh, maneuver like uh, giving stimulus at the angle of uh, mandible. This is this is the uh, this is all. Some people also called as a laryngospasm point. This is to relieve the laryngospasm. Okay, you can try to put the airway, or you can do some suction because maybe the secretions is the reason for uh, uh, laryngospasm. In addition to that, you will be saying that I will be no need to tell, say again, again with the word ABC. You can say my approach is airway breathing circulation. I will move, move the 100% oxygen. I will try to give the CPAP. I will just try to stimulate the laryngospasm point or this angle band of angle metal so that the laryngospasm is relieved. If this fails, I will just try to give a little bit of lidocaine or propofol. Would you like to give saxamethonium in an awake patient? Mind it, you extubated the patient, patient is awake or patient is in between, 
So would you like to give Saksa Mithonium straight away? Or would you like to give something before that? You will be using lidocaine or propofol just to uh, decrease the airway reflexes in the form of just, you are just make sedating a patient. If this fails, then you will be going, giving a small dose of saxamethonium and you, you will use also, you say that I will be arranging all the things for intubation. Because when once you give saxamethonium, patient may, may become apneic. Am I right? And then next part of this uh, question will be that you will be telling that you intubate uh, even with saxamethonium, you fail. So you are giving us according to the blood pressure and everything, you will be giving some more propofol and saxamethonium and you intubate the patient. Okay. And then the next part, part of the question, they, which they always ask is that despite doing this, now the saturation is not maintaining and you auscultate, there is bilateral uh, uh, crepitations. So what has happened? This is negative pressure pulmonary edema. So they can ask you what is negative pressure pulmonary edema. The, and then you can explain that it is because of the neg high, especially in muscular young patients who have high muscle tone. So uh, if there is any obstruction, which may be because of a laryngospasm, removing the tube in light plane of anesthesia or secretions, or, or you know, there is one scenario in which there may be negative pressure pulmonary edema even with endotracheal tube in. That will be the scenario in which the tube is kinked or patient was in light plane of anesthesia and you had not placed airway and now patient has bitten the tube. And now the same scenario is there like laryngospasm. It's not laryngospasm, but like uh, if the patient had uh, nasal surgery and that endotracheal tube was there, nasal airways, uh, nasal place is now blo uh, blocked with the with the with the pack nasal packings, okay, and now the patient bite the tube. So similar thing will be occurring. That patient is in the light plane. Patient is breathing, trying to breathe, but he uh, patient has bitten the tube. So there is the similarly generation of high negative airway pressures, and because no air is coming, so the the weak pulmonary capillaries they are prone. To, to be squeezed. So this negative pressure, high negative pressure is squeezing and pulling out the fluid out and the pulmonary edema develops. Then what will be the treatment of pulmonary edema? You will be making the, you will intubate the patient, you will be giving the PEEP. There is no role of anything else. You will be just ventilating the patient with PEEP according to the blood pressure. And number one and number two, you will just try to pull away the some of the fluid from the extravascular space to intravascular space and pulling out by giving diuretics. That's it. That's a perfect answer of the so question. You will you can get even 10 out of 10 marks if you are answering, covering the whole of the aspects. If you don't use the word, like maybe the, if patient, you are trying to diurese the patient, you need to give, uh, you make, make sure the blood pressure is not too low because if the blood pressure is too low and you give Diuretics, it can it can create problem. Okay. Similarly, you have to uh, give the peep. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, these are the airway complications. One of them, they can ask you how to manage foreign body. How they can ask you about airway fire, airway fire. So how will you deal a patient with airway fire? Yes, the journal things are the same. A little bit of difference here. Anyone wants to speak out? Remove EDT, turn off oxygen. Uh, then change. You remove the tube. You did not put any water. So uh, if the the this one uh, the there is a fire. And just you pull out, so all the passage is you burned it. Would you like to throw some water? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So you will try to extinguish the Wi-Fi. So you will put some saline. That's why in the safety for airway fire protection is one of them is to use low FiO2. Some people also advocate an apneic technique in which you disconnect the circuit while they are putting the laser. This is one of them. Uh, otherwise, they can pack the area. Okay, in some scenarios, there is the, the there are patients with subglottic stenosis and they are doing the treatment. Okay, so in that scenario, maybe the patient already has tracheostomy. Okay, so like in uh, in this scenario or even others, you will be using the low FiO two, and you should have a saline a plagets or saline filled syringes available so that if a fire occurs, you can immediately extinguish it. Rest of the things you have told already. You will be removing the tube and then you will be reintubating. Okay, reintubating and then you will be using fiber optic to see any debris or any any residual damage which may have occurred because of the fire. Okay, so similar is that similar is true for um, like uh, just like in other scenarios of difficult intubation, even if you have foreign body, you will try to have uh, spontaneous ventilation. You will not try to push with uh, with the positive pressure ventilation because foreign body majority cases it can uh, maybe a pediatric patient, but it can occur in adults as well. So uh, the the approach is the same if it is. Uh, uh, causing in, incomplete, you, first of all, you will be evaluating the patient's uh, degree of respiratory obstruction by seeing the respiratory rate, by seeing the respiratory uh, like uh, tidal volume, the, by, by seeing the general look of the patient, by, by whether there is sinusitis, whether there is a, a patient is tachypneic, tachycardic, or any, any signs of obstruction like uh, intercoastal recession or any signs in the neck, any signs and laser flaring or something like that, okay? Uh, but general approach will be, you will be trying to keep the spontaneous ventilation. You will uh, uh, like not try to intubate or not try to remove in the, in the emergency. You will try to make the things ready for intubation, uh, sorry, uh, for even tracheostomy and uh, you will have all the uh, ENT team with you, and then you will be targeting it. The general approach will be if it is causing the full obstruction, uh, you will be trying to push it so that the obstruction is relieved. So these are the things which they are they expect you if you, they are asking you a question of foreign body. And or uh, for example, if there is uh, obstructed foreign body, what will you do? So the airway, because airway equipment and airway complication, they definitely ask in majority of the cases. And airway equipment, they can ask you about types of LMAs, uh, what are different, they can ask you what are different supraglottic airway devices, uh, what are the different generations, how, what are the safety mechanisms, and uh, then they can ask you about uh, tracheostomy, okay, at what level tracheostomy is being done, uh, like uh, how to do the, this needle trichotherotomy, um, what is the, like, uh, there is a scenario of tracheostomy, blocked tracheostomy tube algorithm. They can ask you this uh, block, block tracheostomy algorithm. You will be trying to just pass the, the cannula, this uh, suctioning, or you will be removing it and try to uh, put a new one or uh, trying to do the suctioning. You will be calling the ENT at the same time. Okay. Uh, so these are the things which they can ask you about airway. And similarly, embolism, the approach is the same as I have mentioned you. Um, these are the critical, there is a long list. I have just tried to chalk out the basic principle. The basic principle, again, airway, breathing, circulation, call for help, stopping the surgeon or stopping any inciting event. And then your approach will be uh, according to the scenario. You will be doing the resuscitation, management, evaluation, and looking to the further differential diagnosis or different causes or coexisting features other than the main feature. Okay, so this will be this should be your answer for any critical incidents. We talked about monitoring. We talk about critical incident. Okay, now a few words about ECG. Actually, these all things I have discussed in details. So, if you all of you are interested, you can see the playlist and you will find the 
a lot more than what I'm trying to do at the moment. Okay. So you will find individual and, and the playlist for talks in the channel. You can find about ECG, X-ray, uh, some of the counseling, okay? Uh, and uh, some of the other things which, which may be asked. So I'm just trying to give an overview for ECG, like rate, rhythm, okay? And then any ischemia infarction, okay? Excess deviation, hypertrophy, any signs of any electrolyte imbalance. So they will be asking you like any tachycardia or bradycardia, bradyarrhythmias for bradyarrhythmias or tachyarrhythmias or anything like that. You have to follow the ACLS algorithm. And, but in the same way, the, you, you will be looking at the cause. The same, the same the default approach will be there. Again, you will be seeing air breathing circulation. Why? Because the bradycardia may be without any uh, decompensation or signs of instability, or it may be with, with the signs of instability. For example, if you are dealing tachycardia, now you say that it is not sinus, it is supraventricular tachycardia, for example, and the patient is uh, stable. So your approach will be from the vagal maneuvers and going forward. Then you may be giving adenosine or you will be maybe beta blocker or you will be further evaluating the patient by the form of uh, like doing ABGs to see any electrolyte imbalance or any other cardiac or non-cardiac cause, which is the reason for that arrhythmia. Okay, it may be light plane of anesthesia or tube touching the crina causing um, like uh, PVCs or things like that. So if in the similar case, if the patient is unstable, usually unstable arrhythmias will be needing synchronized cardioversion synchronize it with the R wave, okay? And uh, they can ask you that how to do it, synchronize cardioversion. There may be a cardioversion, maybe also chemical cardioversion. So chemical cardioversion, all the antiarrhythmics which you are using is actually uh, chemical cardioversion, okay? Uh, so this is some words about uh, tachycardia. For bradycardia, you will be using atropine. You will be using uh, temporary pacing, or you may be using... Uh, second like drugs like uh, glucagon or uh, isoprenaline or dopamine or things or epinephrine things like that according to the latest acls protocol you will be looking at, into it and uh, like if uh, uh, other ecg changes they can ask you usually this hypertrophy and uh, excess deviation are because they are usually not acute so usually this is uh, an oski they are asking you the acute arrhythmias of tachy or bradyarrhythmia or ischemia infarction. So if there is ischemia infarction, the scenario may be of intraoperative myocardial infarction or intraoperative ischemic changes. So they will be giving you an ECG and then you will be, you will be saying that your approach, again, you will be saying the same word which I have told you, okay? And your option will be to maintain the myocardial oxygen demand supply ratio. So you should be knowing what are the factors for myocardial oxygen demand ratio. You will be doing the, uh, you will be sending the, uh, uh, the this uh, enzymes, cardiac enzymes, TROP T, TROP I, CPK, CKMB. You will be doing the 12 light ECG. You will be discussion with, discussing with the surgeon at what step the surgery is or what you should, what you should be your second uh, further management will be according to the cardiologist involvement. You will be doing some work like if, you, if it is possible, you can put NG and put, give some aspirin or uh, similarly, you, you will maybe getting the, uh, if the patient is like not, not unstable, you can use beta blockers or you will be controlling the pain with the, with the opioids, morphine or things like that. Okay, so further management or you will be considering thrombolytic therapy according to the scenario, okay? But usually in the ECG, they will be asking you about the identification of arrhythmias, SVT, atrial fibrillation, uh, bradyarrhythmias. arrhythmias, okay? And uh, you can just follow the, uh, in the, in the link which I have shared, there are a number of ECG uh, books as well as ECG rhythms, uh, which may be asked, okay? But the, you should have the basic uh, uh, th thing you should be uh, like considering when you are trying to cover the aspects related to ECG, like uh, ECG changes in hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, okay, hypermagnesemia, hypercalcemia, you should be knowing about it. 
and that's it they can they they, they can ask you about uh, they can put the, even the sim, sim, simple rhythm strip or 12 bbc uh, and you should your approach should be in the the systematic way that first of all you should be looking at the rate rhythm and then you will be going in, in the further details like excess or uh, any ischemia infarction p wave morphology or uh, a, a, like qt interval pr interval qrs complexes or any any signs of any bundle, bundle branch block or things like that so this is the general approach for ecg okay for abgs uh, like you know because uh, i am trying to cover as much as possible uh, i we have discussed abg ecg x ray in detail so you will be finding it in the playlist but and we can have subsequently when uh, according to the time you which you have or time uh, which i am able to extract for you people uh, i can do it and but but you can ask uh, any scenario um, any time in the group rather you should be discussing so that you um, get yourself prepared because if you just remain shy and don't speak out and then talk then it will be your loss it, it is not anyone else's not loss especially i am not in any exam now and i don't have any other interest so it's you you have to uh, keep keep me busy if you want to ask anything okay uh, so for uh, x ray or uh, for abgs i will say uh, that uh, uh, do watch uh, the previous discussion but generally i will tell you that abgs people are interested in finding the exact formulas and exact numbers but i will tell you just try to have a bird eye view to find the probable answer in the form of whether there is acidosis or alkalosis this should should be your first answer or uh, if the abg is uh, ph is normal then you will be looking at the mixed disorders so the this should be the first answer should be that whether the, the it is acidosis or alkalosis then the other answer will be it is compensated or uncompensated or mixed disorder okay so you really remember one thing that compensation is never 100% it should be lagging behind if it is 100% or if it is overcompensated that it means there is mixed disorder okay then you will be calculating the anion gap anion gap uh, usually there are some extra things even which i don't know uh, and i never uh, i don't think so that they will fail you on delta gap or things like that it may, may be the extra extra question uh, i don't i cannot teach you delta gap because i don't myself has a very good concept about it uh, we we discuss before uh, some of the people knew about it so we discuss in detail so please do watch that segment of abgs in the previous discussions okay you i will resend the link you can you can follow it but usually then they will be asking you that what will you do that you remember one thing the na again your answer will be according to the scenario you don't have to treat the abgs you have to treat the patient okay that for example if there there is a predominant respiratory problem you will be giving oxygen you will be giving some bronchodilators you will be giving antibiotics you will be doing some chest physio you will be giving uh, like uh, you will be needing mechanical ventilation things like that or if for example if there is some metabolic problem maybe the patient need be, is needing some correction of electrolytes maybe patient is uh, needing uh, some fluids maybe the patient is needing dialysis the maybe the patient is needing bicarb so things like that so they will be asking you according to the ecg according to the abg's finding and overall clinical scenario you have to you have to treat the patient not treat the abg so whenever they were because now they, nowadays they are just having interactive station so just whenever they give you the uh, abg abg uh, uh, strip please don't hurt yourself by trying to calculate numbers exactly just try to get the answer whether it is on uh, what is the trend so if you having the trend towards like you are have a, having a, a, a abg strip in your hand and you think it is it is seeming to be uh, like uh, overcompensated so it means you will be looking at the the mixed disorder so you will be saying that it is respiratory acidosis with the metabolic um, component as well okay because usually the respiratory acidosis will be compensated by metabolic alkalosis usually 
okay so it may be in uh, uh, like uh, whether you uh, whether which is the primary disorder the clinical scenario will tell you if it was it was it was a copd patient and now the said copd patient is having a mixed disorder picture so you will be seeing that the primary disorder is most probably respiratory or if you have a patient with renal failure or any other condition or any other drug toxicity or anything like that you will be deciding accordingly okay so these are just general overview of abgs x ray you see remember one thing don't go in uh, like uh, explaining the x ray like medical student you just need to tell the 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 findings they will be asking you findings yes you can have a look whether the patient this x ray is uh, oriented or not oriented or this seems to be what is the left side and what is the right side whether it is a, a ap and p you will you, this is the least important thing which they are expecting majority of the x rays which they will be asking you indifferently will be ap because uh, uh, for example if you find an endotracheal tube or a cvp it's least likely that this patient is ap view this is uh, sorry but most likely it is uh, ap view it is not pa view okay so this is the thing and then you will be looking at bone you will be looking at the lung field the bone will be there may be there will be some fracture loss loss of alignment if you are seeing that it means that there may be some fracture in the in the soft tissue you will be looking at the lung lungs or uh, you will be looking at the bronchovascular markings okay so there may be opacity like maybe like uh, uh, this one some whitish opaque opacities in opacities maybe regular or irregular or uh, in in one side or bilateral so then you that that opacity may be pneumonia maybe edema okay so that will be according to the scenario they have given you it may be for example if the this uh, uh, this uh, these uh, angles costophrenic angle or uh, other angles are lost then it means it may be some infective cause or it is uh, pulmonary edema or for example if uh, the lung shadow is the markings are lost so maybe it is pulmonary embolism sorry this is a pneumothorax okay so this should be your approach when you are looking at the x ray don't don't try to 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 waste your time in finding it is ap or p just try to find the positive things and you can look at the bone you can look at uh, at the like uh, whether the trachea is central or deviated so you you can tell about these things this will be giving you the positive and try to find any artifacts uh, like for example if a cvp is there it's actually is an artifact uh, if anything like uh, if it, uh, like any any other finding which you are seeing and then you you the last thing which i did not say up till now is the heart shadow heart shadow may be increase heart shadow may be like it it may be enlarged or it may, like uh, there may be some finding related to any chamber dilatation aortic knuckle or straightening border these are the things but generally they are expecting from you is to tell the positive findings in a way and then they will be asking you the differential diagnosis yes maybe this one maybe i will be correlating with the clinical picture this should be your answer for any x ray because you are not treating the x ray or abgs or ecg you are treating the patient okay so they may be asking you if they are like they have created a scenario of pneumonia so the question you you should be expecting is what is ventilator associated pneumonia what is the, like what they, maybe this is least likely to be asked in intermediate module because this may be asked in uh, the final exam in uh, but there is no law they can ask you here as well because a two years training have gone and you are uh, having the rotation of icu in the uh, pre imm time as well so they can ask you this uh, question anything related to it okay if it like uh, there is pneumonia they can ask you about antibiotics they can ask you about early or late onset the organisms or if for example it they may be asking you about lung protective strategies that how to give the lung protective strategies in the form of p per permissive hypercapnia and managing in the way that you are targeting the pressures if you are starting with the slightly low tidal volumes and gradually increasing it up till a certain pressures uh, airway pressures are achieved or then you are looking at the saturation you are looking at the co2 and you are titrating it with the use of peep 
you are giving some high respiratory rate and may optimize targeting the minute ventilation and you are correlating with the with the abgs you are correlating with the airway pressures okay so this is how this question may be asked about x ray usually the x ray will be asked like that some of the radiological other things i am not very good at it they can ask ct scan about subdural or epidural unfortunately i will not be able to tell you a very exact answer there is convex outward or convex in i i always forget we discuss before in detail okay but you should be keeping in mind that they, they but this will not be a too much detailed one they, it will be related to whether it is subdural or epidural uh, uh, like that okay so if there is some midline shift or there is uh, the shadow is telling you uh, extra dural hematoma then they may be asking that you maybe you need to drain it things like that okay so this is related to x ray so uh, I, in the in the last i will be discussing something about counseling and then we will finish our our session uh, any question up till now because you people are not speaking and only i am speaking i am now getting tired now any questions up till now please anything are you understanding yes please yes sir okay uh, uh they will be uh, giving you uh, one or two uh, scenarios of counseling okay so counseling you know remember i will give you the basic tips for counseling and in the next session we will we will try to practice them basic remember one thing you don't need to convince the 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 scenario in in whatever scenario they have given you you don't need to convince that you are correct and the other person is wrong okay or you don't need to make signatures from hit with your with your point of view you, the basic mechanism of counseling is that you have to introduce yourself you have to greet your the, the patient or whoever is there and you have to be very polite okay and you will be telling the the both sides of the picture like you are not uh, using uh, one one sided bias you are telling the both sides and then let the uh, the patient or attendant decide whether he wants to choose that special technique because the counseling the i will tell you which counseling they can ask you counseling between uh, choice between regional anesthesia or peripheral nerve block and versus uh, general anesthesia counseling about epidurals okay and then then the the other thing will be the problems which are there like any critical incidents occurred any intraoperative death occurred any sucks apnea occur like any other the same thing will be that you will be telling the incidents that uh, we were doing this and this is a very rare thing which we cannot predict but this has happened and we are trying to to do whatever is the best possible way okay so this will be the general approach like and then some of the things like awareness has occurred so you do your approach will be that you will be evaluating the patient you will be asking some question and you will be letting the patient speak out that what his uh, grievance is what his concern is okay and then you will be telling in for example in case of awareness you will be telling that you will be uh, 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 like that was the usually you will be create a scene that you will be bleed you will bleed you are bleeding and we decrease the depth of anesthesia because it was unsafe uh, for us to give you too much anesthesia because it would have costed your life so that would be the, your approach in case of uh, awareness um or because even if for example if examiner has asked you that there is some equipment failure so you will be you will be using this that it is very unfortunate that it has occurred we have a mechanism that we periodically check our machines and this and that and but unfortunately this has occurred we will refer you to some of the doctor which is which are dealing which are expert they will be giving you some medications which will be giving you relaxation and you will be coming out of this trauma okay and similarly the other complication which they they frequently ask is about pdph so uh, first of all you will be uh, it may be in different ways that may there was a pdph in last uh, epidural or 
uh, PDPH has just occurred in this incident at uh, this time, you will be reassuring the patient. You will be saying that it, it has, it's a common, uh, it, it, like it is, it is a possibility which can occur. And this much is the incidence, okay? And this has occurred, but uh, we will be giving you some fluid. We will be giving you, like, you will be telling the, the me possible mechanism. And at the end of the day, you have to explain about the uh, epidural blood patch, okay? So uh, that will be the way. And again, you have to be apologetic. And if it has occurred in the last scenario and now the patient has uh, come again, so you don't have to say, no, no, we will, uh, this time you will not have, uh, definitely you will not have any uh, PDPH. You will tell that they, it can occur again as well, but you will be telling the risk versus benefit that these are the uh, risks, but these are the advantages which you are getting from epidural. Okay, some of the counseling stations is about uh, another thing is that, that you were in trying to intubate and you break the tooth. So um, like uh, this is uh, uh, like they will, uh, the, the patient will be very aggressive. You will be saying that uh, we had done your thorough airway examination and whatever was possible, uh, we did it. But uh, somehow because or any of the tests which we do before in the evaluation are not perfect and there is some limitation. So we faced it and that time our priority, priority was to uh, secure the airway because if we had not done it, you would have lost your life. Uh, so uh, uh, you will, we, will be, we, we were using very specialized equipment when that used truth was a little bit loose or the, the, examine, this, this patient can counter argument that it was not loose you will be looking in the scenario, okay? So you can say that it was a little bit loose or if, for example, if you deny, then you will have to accept and respect his thought and say, say that we had no other choice. So unfortunately, but we have a specific department in our hospital, which is dealing such things and we will refer you over there and we will try to compensate as much as possible according to our administrative policy. So you will be telling this thing, okay? The recently, they, in some exam, they have asked about organ donation. So again, again, I tell you something. You only have few minutes. They don't want that you are uh, to convince the attendant of the patient that the, his her dear fellow's uh, uh, diseased one, you definitely have to extract. You just will be telling that there are, uh, uh, this, these are the advantages which uh, other person saving life can be there or you can use that that your uh, son or father or whatever uh, has already uh, documented his or her will and if you if you're saying that this is haram or this is so how you can say there are there are some uh, uh, point of view from the religious uh, scholars and you can follow but at the end of the day it's your choice because you are the one to decide about it so this is one of the scenario. And if, for example, I missed that if any critical incidents has occurred, you have to explain accordingly that this has happened and we did uh, our best to save the patient because this intraoperative death or intraoperative sudden uh, event can be acute, anticipated or unanticipated. So you have to counsel accordingly. Okay. So I think uh, we will stop here. Uh, I would request all of you to go through the previous discussions. Uh, by the way, when is your uh, IMM exam? When, when is your uh, OSCE exam? All, all the sessions I have conducted before, all of them are available in the YouTube. You just have to go to the playlists and everything is arranged. You just have to use some of your precious time just to scroll, browse through and you will find everything. Okay? Like I have made uh playlist for talks i have made there is a playlist for critical incidents or even other things which you are never interested because all of you are busy in uh, uh, mcqs and when i uh, ask you people to join majority of answers uh, sir how much are your charges sir we are preparing uh, mcqs so uh, once we pass mcqs we will uh, join you or um, um, some some of the similar answers. So remember one thing, uh, there is no difference in MCQs or written or Viva or SAQs. The basic concept is the same. If you have the concept, you will never fail in the exam, okay? 
I, I tell you, whether it is oral part or it is written part. And another thing is that there should be no requirement for any IMM, this one, uh, talks preparation, if you are being evaluated in the, uh, by your uh, supervisor or your senior resident's bedside, because this is all OSCE is bedside, whatever you are facing, whatever, whatever you are uh, managing in the operation theater, okay? So unfortunately, because this is not the structure which we are following fully in across uh, uniformly for all the residents. So that's why you people think that it is something out of the world. One important thing, remember one thing that if someone tries to fail in OSCE, then only in that scenario, someone fails. Usually nobody fails in the OSCE. And another thing is that the reason is that you have a lot of margin. So don't have any, any hangover of one bad station that day if you have one bad station forget about just throw throw the trauma of that bad station before going to the other station okay so because there are there is a lot of margin and you can clear the talks even if you have one or two bad stations very bad station even because in the number of stations you will get 100 percent. okay so best of luck and all of you are welcome to ask any question on the whatsapp group and the recording will be available soon in the YouTube. Thank you very much.